Hello, and welcome to the House Call Pro QuickBooks Integration Overview. I'm your host, Tomas Waples, Data Specialist here at House Call Pro. And in this video, we will be looking at the House Call Pro customer and discussing how it integrates with the QuickBooks customer. Now, I've already got our first customer set up here, but there are a couple things I want to discuss before I hit that Create button down at the bottom. First, and most importantly, is that House Call Pro has a field-to-field -field integration with QuickBooks. Simply put, the first name field in House Call Pro integrates directly to the first name field in QuickBooks, as does the last name, the phone number, and so on. While we're thinking about this, it is, it is critical to remember that whatever we enter into House Call in, say, the last name field, will eventually be exactly what is in the last name field over in QuickBooks. The display name, which I'm highlighting here, is no different from any of these other fields, right? It also integrates directly to the display name in QuickBooks Online or the customer name in QuickBooks Desktop. The reason that I'm calling this out is that House Call Pro auto fills this field for you. By default, House Call will combine the first name and the last name, just like you see here, to form the House Call Pro display name. Now, this will likely be exactly what you want when it comes to your residential customers, but it may not be ideal for your larger clients. If you're working with a property management company, say, or a general contractor, you may wish to put the company name here in this display name field, as opposed to you know, simply your contact name. Just keep in mind that whatever we put into House Call Pro will be exactly what goes into QuickBooks and will, of course, determine what you see in your customer center. Now, since we've got some information here, let's talk a little bit about how House Call is going to update QuickBooks, keeping in mind, of course, that this is a one way integration. House Call updates QuickBooks, not the other way around. Once this customer is integrated, any changes that we make to the House Call Pro customer will eventually get sent over to QuickBooks. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit more in a minute here about exactly how those changes go over to QuickBooks, but for right now, we're just focusing on you know, the, the changes here in, in House Call. So if we update one of these fields, say the phone number, right? Oh, should probably put a different phone number in there. <laughs> the next time this gets synced over to QuickBooks, House Call will pull the old phone number out of QuickBooks and put in that new one. Now, this is how we make sure that House Call and QuickBooks stay in sync. House Call makes QuickBooks match House Call. Now, the exact same is going to be true if for any reason we remove that phone number. When House Call updates QuickBooks, it will remove that phone number from QuickBooks. And because there's no new phone number to put in its stead, House Call will leave that field blank. Remember, House Call makes QuickBooks match House Call. Now, I'm calling this out special for two reasons. First, this is the only way that House Call will remove information from QuickBooks. House Call will not delete entire customers, nor invoices, nor payments. It is only these specific linked fields that can be removed from QuickBooks. Second, this can be a little bit of a stumbling block for some of our newer pros as they're just getting going. The vast majority of the time, when someone comes in using that blue chat bubble in the lower right hand corner of the screen and asks why House Call Pro is removing it from information from QuickBooks, it almost always turns out that that information is being pulled out of House Call first. Now, let me put this phone number back in here just so we can see how it's going to push over to QuickBooks. And let's come down here and talk a little bit about our addresses. Now, the first thing that we want to keep in mind when we're talking about addresses is that, if possible, we want to use this Google verified address. 
it's a convenient way of making sure all the address information is entered correctly and that it's pushing over to QuickBooks in a you know clean and, and tidy way. Looking further down the screen though, you'll see this plus address button. This button is the first of two ways that we can add additional address information to this customer. Now, this additional address has a very specific use case. This is for your smaller clients who may have, for example, their home and another home in town that they rent out. Or maybe they're a small business owner with their home in a storefront and you do work for both. You can have two, maybe three addresses in this section, right? Including, of course, our billing address. Before it can get a little bit tough to manage those different addresses. Now, you may be thinking to yourself right now, wait a second, Tomash, what about those property managers and general contractors that you mentioned earlier? I've got them as clients. They've got 15 locations. Um, this is, this is going to be a problem for me if I can only have two or three in here. Now, this is a good question, right? And this is exactly the case. These, these general contractors, these property managers, this is exactly the case that this customer bills to is made for, right? This is where we create the parent-child relationship here in house call, which translates either into the customer-sub-customer relationship in QuickBooks Online or the customer-job relationships over in QuickBooks Desktop. So what I've been working on so far is the parent-customer so give me just a moment here, let me create this, and then we'll get into the child customer. Now that I've got the child customer built here, right? We can see, of course, we have our contact information up top, our address information down below. I'm going to go in and link this to the parent customer. Now, of course, you can tell that I'm working in the test account here. So I've got a number of these customers of mine to choose from. Um, obviously, in your own accounts, um, you probably aren't going to see anything like this. You'll just see the regular parent customer relationship. Now, before we head over into QuickBooks, now that we've sort of covered all the pieces of the customer, before we head over into QuickBooks, there's a few things I want to talk to you about. Uh, because I need to show both what this looks like in QuickBooks Online and in QuickBooks Desktop, I'm going to be making separate videos as a supplement to this one for each of those. So just go ahead and choose the one that's more relevant to you. Of course, you're welcome to watch both, uh, but there is slightly different terminology between the two, and I don't want anybody to get confused. Uh, second, and equally important, is we need to talk about how Housecall is going to send that information over to QuickBooks. Now, for both QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the specifics of the integration in another video, we need to have an invoice attached to these customers that has been finished, invoiced, or paid to go over into QuickBooks. Now, I'm going to talk more about the finish invoice pay process when we do our invoice video next. Um, for this specific moment in time, I just want you all to keep in mind that I am doing a little bit of work on the back end to get this customer over. Uh, there are a few additional things we're going to need to do rather than just creating the customer to send it over to QuickBooks. That having been said, I'm going to end this first segment and we'll pick up again in QuickBooks Online or Desktop, uh, depending on which you need more. Um, and then of course, the next video in this series is going to be all about our invoices and how they push over. Talk to you soon.